I've been working as a freelancer for about five years now, and it took me years of making mistakes, working with the wrong clients, and leaving money on the table to understand the fundamental lessons that every successful freelancer needs to learn. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you those fundamental lessons so you don't have to spend years making the same mistakes that I did. So let's get into the first lesson, and that is that you get better clients as soon as you act like the freelancer who deserves better clients. So you're probably asking, what does a freelancer who deserves better clients actually look like? Well, the answer's pretty simple. When you're looking to buy a product, the chances are that you're gonna to gravitate towards companies that you trust. Whether that's that they have the same values as you, or you believe that they have the best product on the market. Now, when people are looking for freelancers, it pretty much works exactly the same. As a freelancer, what you need to do is position yourself as the solution to the problem that your ideal client has. Now, better clients is gonna be different for everyone. Some people might wanna work with luxury brands, other people might wanna work with tech companies. So each company is gonna have different needs, different wants, and different objections to working with freelancers. The first step to understanding how to find those better clients is to understand exactly what those better clients look like to you. Who is it that you actually want to work with? And as soon as you understand who it is you want to work with, then you need to tailor your offering to what they actually want. For example, if you want to work with luxury brands, then what you need to do is present your offering as a luxury offering. And this really isn't just one specific thing. It's not just having a nice logo for your freelance business. It's not just having a nice website. And it's not just the way that you speak. Really what it is is accumulation of everything that you do, from how you write the copy on your website, to the design of your website, to how you talk about what you're offering. Essentially acting as a freelancer who deserves better clients is how you brand your freelance business. It's how you talk about what you do, it's how you present what you do. It's really an accumulation of everything that you put out into the world about your business. You need to be speaking to those better clients that you want to work with, and as soon as you have that positioning nailed down, it becomes a no-brainer for those better clients to want to work with you. So the first step to becoming a successful freelancer and working with better clients is to act like a freelancer and talk like a freelancer and position yourself like a freelancer who could work with those better companies. The second lesson is to be an expert and not a technician. Experts are paid for their insight and knowledge around a specific project. They have an input in the planning phase. A company comes to an expert with a problem, and the expert is the one who is trusted to solve that problem. So first of all, they come up with the solution for the problem that the client came to them with, and then they implement that solution. Whereas a technician is someone who only implements the solution. While this shift doesn't seem like a huge deal, technicians are incredibly replaceable. If you are only the person who is implementing the solution, then that means that really anyone who is competent with your skill set can do that thing. But if you're the expert who is also involved in coming up with the solution in the first place and helping with the strategy, then you become an invaluable member of their team. The difference between freelancers who just get by and freelancers who thrive is the difference between being an expert and a technician. Companies tell technicians to do a specific thing, whereas companies ask experts how to solve a specific problem. Positioning yourself as an expert in your industry is really gonna be vital to becoming a successful freelancer over the long haul. It means that companies are gonna to want to work with you consistently and you you're not easily replaceable. When I made this switch from technician to expert, I noticed that I was getting a lot more referrals from past clients that I'd worked with because there's so much input in the rest of their business and I wasn't just the person to build the website that they'd already laid out and already solved the problem of. Now the third lesson that successful freelancers need to understand is that you have to follow a process. Now that process does not have to be perfect and that process will continue to evolve and it'll probably be pretty wrong in the beginning. But the reason to follow a process is that it reduces so much mental load and so much of that burden that you have just like in the background ram of your brain when you're working on a client project. Now that process can be really simple. I have just a basic template inside of Notion which has pretty much every single task I need to do when I go from the beginning of a website project to actually launching that project. If you're interested in finding out more about how I manage my projects inside of Notion, then let me know in the comments and I'll drop a link to the template that I use to manage all of my projects. Now following a process is not particularly a sexy thing to do and it's not particularly 
a very glamorous thing to do. But when you follow a process, it's much easier to show prospective clients exactly what you're gonna do and how you're gonna do it. When you have a process and a defined way of working, it positions you as an expert and it helps people feel confident that you know exactly what you're doing. As I mentioned, this process will not be perfect when you start. The most important thing is to just jot down a process in the beginning and then over time, just keep refining that process as you complete more and more projects. The fourth thing I wish I knew about freelancing five years ago was to position my work as an investment and not as an expense. The best freelancers find it easy to charge a lot of money because they make working with them an absolute no brainer. See, if you're charging a company 10 grand, that can be a lot of money and they might think that that's too much of an expense. But if you position that as an investment to their company, then 10 grand can become an absolute no brainer for them to invest that money. Essentially what you're trying to do here is go from it being a hard decision to justify that expense for the company to making it a completely obvious decision that they just should go with you and they should spend that money. A perfect example that I have of positioning my work as an investment rather than expense is with a lot of the B2B companies that I work with. Typically what I'll ask on the sales call is how much an individual customer is typically worth to them. Once I understand this, it's very easy to talk about the website in terms of potential future revenue versus hypothetical hypothetical results. For example, in the sales pipeline of a company that I work with, every single deal that they close is worth over a hundred grand. At this level, they don't need to close too many deals for it to be an absolute no brainer to work with me. But if we didn't first establish exactly how much revenue it is worth to them, it'd be very difficult for me to persuade them that my rates are worth it and that working with me is an investment and not an expense. As soon as you know exactly how much a new customer is worth to that client, you can then start to put things into context. If you were to build their website and increase their traffic by 25%, then there's a very tangible return for them. And if you were to increase the conversion rate on the website, then this could increase their revenue by X amount. As soon as you take your service and go from this abstract concept that they're thinking about in their head of you doing this service, for example, you writing the copy or you building a website and actually put it into terms of numbers and how much revenue they could generate from working together, making that decision to work with you just becomes the obvious choice. The fifth and final lesson I wish I knew about freelancing five years ago is that the lowest paying clients are always the hardest to please. Now, I don't fully understand what this is, but pretty much every single time that I've taken on a lower paying client, whether that's because I just wanted to work with them in the beginning, whether that's because I just wanted to fill up my calendar and bring in some more money, pretty much every single project like that has ended up being a horrendous project to work on. For example, one of the lowest paying clients I've worked with, the project took over 12 months and never actually ended up getting finished because they kept asking for revisions and then disappearing and then asking for more revisions. A great way to look at low paying clients is that if you wouldn't do the work for free, then it should be full price. You should not offer people discounts and you should not work at a discounted rate because the chances are you're gonna end up resenting the project. Over time, I've really found that the opportunity cost of working with low paying clients really is not worth it. For me, it's much better to not take on that load and not have my calendar completely full with low paying clients and rather wait a little bit and actually scout out those good opportunities. When you find those good clients, those better clients that we were talking about earlier in the video, it's much easier to work with them. It's more enjoyable and you don't have horror stories like a one month project spanning out the course of over 12 months. Every time you're contemplating working with a low paying client, remember that the chances are you'll probably regret it unless you'd be happy to do that work for free. And the only real reason I can think of working with a low paying client is if that project would actually be worth it for your portfolio and potentially bring in a lot more future work. But I think a really good way to frame this is that if you wouldn't work with someone for free, so if you didn't like their company and what they did so much that you'd work for free, 
then they have to pay full price. There is no discount and there is no working with cheap clients because more often than not, it'll come back to bite you and you will end up resenting working on that project. And there you have it. They're the lessons that I wish I knew about freelancing five years ago. As I mentioned earlier in the video, if you're interested in the project management system that I use to manage all of my client projects, then let me know and I can create that and share it with you. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.